Hey guys, this is Evan Dukas from the Colorado Garden, and today I'm excited to bring you a little review and a little tour of this greenhouse that I finally uh, completed this fall. Um, as many of you guys know, I've been wanting to do something like this for a very long time, um, or, or at least those of you who know me. I'm definitely more of a warm weather, Mediterranean climate junkie, California type of guy who, uh, you know, all my life I've been kind of stuck in a colder climate thus far. So uh, I've been really just wanting to do myself the due diligence of having a nice warm spot, a nice sunroom, you know, a little scape, um, if I may, during, you know, the cold Colorado winters here. So lo and behold, after much, much planning and definitely a low budget to work on, definitely a low budget, you know, we couldn't uh, justify something too expensive at this point, especially the tens of thousands of dollars that it usually takes to do something like this. So, um, you know, I was able to uh, to complete this thing. Um, and as you can see, material-wise, it's actually mostly uh, compiled of, of old Victorian windows. Um, recycled or upcycled, I should say hot new term for something like that but here it is um, and I'm just gonna give you a quick tour today of you know or at least in this video of the functionality and um, you know a little bit of the methodology um, going into this thing and uh, so from the ground up as you can see see the, uh, the bricks don't really play a role um, the bricks are actually something that I'm working on as far as um, uh, uh, drainage. I'm actually gonna, you know, um, um, get soil up to, uh, to where you see the bricks and and have it go down because I just don't, you know don't want any flooding. This is kind of a low spot down here. But anyway, um, other than the bricks, which aren't really playing any sort of role currently, as you can see, the foundation is railroad ties, um, and, these, and these are great. They seriously last a really long time, like like a hundred years, um, and you know they're treated really well. They're not going to go anywhere. Um, and uh, these are the real genuine railroad ties. These are not the kind of, you know, quote unquote railroad ties that you get in, um, in Home Depot or something like that, which are not really the real thing. Uh, this is, you know, you'd have to go to, to, to uh, one of those places that recycle and deal with the old ties that they get out of the, um, the, the train tracks. So that's the foundation. I'll kind of walk around as I go over it. So as I said, old windows, um, except for this one here and the door, which are newer. I was actually able to steal this thing, not steal, but I was able to get this thing out of uh, the dumpster of a window place. Go figure, and it's in excellent condition. There was just like, a, you know, there were some issues with like with the sides of it, but other than that, you know, it just it got put together just fine. And the door, um, I was able to get that for about 20 hours off of Craigslist. Really excited about that, because you get this, you know, the double pane, well made, and, um, and, and everything else, um, I was actually usually able to find two of everything that didn't already have a storm. So these little windows had a storm on them. Um, so you get that nice, you know, the nice air gap for um, for efficiency. These didn't, but I had two, so so I actually put them together. And you know, now, now there's the air gap. The only area, so in this area, this spot, and the same spot on the other side, um, I actually constructed my own. So in the framing here, I put a little, uh, little one by ones here, and I put a, a panel of glass and a panel of glass on the other side. Uh, finished it off, you know, caulked it and finished it off with uh, with molding. Um, and this is because you know I had to compensate. Uh, the windows stopped here and the corner was here, so I was either just going to put like straight wood um, or fill it in this way. So it worked really well. Here's the west side here. And then the roof, um, the top of the roof is constructed, um, you know, it's wood framing, two by sixes, and then on top of that, I'll try to get, get a good shot there. That's corrugated fiberglass, heavy mill. It's the good stuff. Um, I, would, I would really recommend it after much res uh, research on roofing, because, you know, with the Colorado sun, it just, uh, nothing's gonna last. This stuff is really good. It has, actually has a 20-year warranty and um, if some of you are looking into uh, doing something similar, definitely comment on the bottom. I could help you find something good like this. Um, uh, it's just, it, it's, it's definitely the best stuff. Um, I've seen the clear PVC and the polycarbonate. They even sell some of this stuff in Home Depot. And long story short, it's complete junk. Um, it's not gonna last on you. It's gonna get brittle really fast. So I wanna find something good and you know that, that definitely did it. So uh, I'm gonna take you inside. Um, 
So uh, the point of this greenhouse was um, I wanted to really capture more of a Mediterranean climate, not a tropical one. Um, I, I just didn't think it'd be realistic to achieve tropical uh, conditions, tropical temperatures <clears throat> um, without a whole lot of energy spent, you know, a lot of electricity. So, um, and I'm, I'm more of a Mediterranean fan anyway. So all these plants I have in here are Mediterranean types that can um, take temperatures sometimes down to, um, you know, 20 or um, some of these, well, actually these are cold hardy figs, so they can go even lower. But um, yeah, so I have uh, some, you know, relatively cold hardy plants in there just in case it gets pretty cold. But I have to heat this thing, and, and this is really one of the, the foundations of what I wanted to do here, is um, implementing a, a new technology that's really taking the permaculture world by storm. It's called uh, the, the subterranean heating and cooling system. It's been around for quite a bit now, and um, well, not really permaculture, but you know, uh, in 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 large greenhouse operations, you know, heating and cooling, you know, um, a lot of operations will spend many thousands, like tens of thousands uh, of dollars a month on on heating or cooling. Uh, what this system does, long story short, and it took a lot of work because this was all a four foot trench, huge hole, um, uh, and then backfilled. But basically, this pipe draws in all the warmest air, and that's why it's you know towards the top because the warm air rises, of course, draws it and shoots it down, down deep into the earth through a series of tubing. Um, at, at uh, different depths, the, the deepest ones are at least four feet, uh, four feet down from, from the surface here. Um, so, so it draws it down, blasts, blasts it in, and it comes out on this, on this side, all uh, nice and warm and toasty on a really cold night. Or, um, you know, during the daytime, uh, just a little cooler to help regulate. So it's a cooling and heating system, and it is extremely efficient uh this it, all this runs on is a low powered fan came and see it um but this is it it's an it's a duct booster um so it's a, so it's a, a duct booster fan it costs like 35 dollars um and it's extremely low uh low you know low energy um, um you know this is the kind of thing that people have in their homes that just you know to, to just to boost the speed of uh, of the airflow in a forced air heating situation so that's it um is a lot more work than it was money to, to you know to put together this is just all you know cheap materials it's, you know the, the duct work i actually used um buckets <clears throat> stacked and then uh, uh attached to each other to you know to create that chamber um on one side and on the other so the piping you know or the tubing if you will um it, you know it just really connects you know there, there are holes drilled and it goes from one to the other uh, all the way down there it's a really neat little system so far it's working. So last night it went down to 19 degrees already here in November in Colorado and um, it stayed around 40 degrees in here. Uh, the lowest I think it got was like 38.9 or something like that. So not bad. And also to help supplement with that are these 55 gallon black jugs. Black of course to to absorb all that nice sunlight which I should probably un, you know uncover them with these plants here so since it's finally going to start getting sunny in here because those trees behind us are going to finally start losing their leaves, their elm, and they really hold on to their leaves. That's the only, you know, drawback about November here. Um, but, you know, another few weeks, I anticipate it'll be really sunny in here. So these these 55-gallon drums that are black, are going to absorb a lot of heat, um, especially filled with water. You know, water is, uh, is one of the best thermal conductors there is because of the hydrogen content, um, aside also from uh, the earth, um, which makes this... Uh, uh, system really, you know, it's just so effective. It just borrows energy, you know. Um, so, like, you know, uh, in Colorado, it'll, it'll get really sunny in here because sunny day. Uh, I don't want it to get above like 68, 70 uh, in here in the middle of the winter. So it's going to kick off. I have two thermostats. It's going to uh, pull the, you know, the um, warm air in, and it gets into the earth. It warms up the earth down there, um, and then later on at night when it's like 10 degrees out. And the second thermostat, you know, the cool, the, the, the heating thermostat kicks on again. Um, it's going to, you know, take in the very cold air and that, that nice warm earth from earlier is going to warm up the air. So excellent little system. Um, obviously, this is a very small and scaled down version of the subterranean heating system. 
um, you know, the, uh, the, uh, there's just a lot of potential that you can do with a system like this in, uh, in a good operation. But, you know, with the limitations that I had here, it seems to work. It's pretty fun. Um, so yeah, we have these and then also worth mentioning on top of here is a white one because I, you know, I want the water temperature to stay more consistent. This is for irrigation and I did a little conversion here. I have, have the spigot, I have the timer and I actually have a drip system on most of these plants that you see in here. So that when I go away or, you know, something's going on, you know, we're, we're, we're pretty, pretty, um, sustained. Um, of course, a, a little, uh, shelving unit made out of pallets because everyone needs one of those. And then the fun little bistro set to enjoy a nice little coffee or tea out here. It's beautiful already. It's like warm in here today. And also these little windows here, I should, I should mention, um, these were built also with, you know, plywood, uh, framing and then plywood on both sides. And, and of course, uh, um, insulation inside this whole strip. I'll show you how this works just for now. Uh, I might get automatic openers, but for now, this is, this will do the job. So that's for, yeah, that's good for, for good airflow, good ventilation, which is extremely important in greenhouses. And of course I have the screen door here. So that's it. That is the greenhouse. I hope you enjoyed, um, a little tour and the functionality and the methodology behind what, what you know, what was put into it. It was a lot of work. It took me a whole summer, but you know what? I think, um, I want to say that, I don't know, the cost was somewhere between, you know, maybe $1,700 and maybe $2,500. Uh, couldn't be, it couldn't have been much more than that. And like I said, I mean, something like this would just be ridiculously expensive. So we're very excited. Um, uh, I'm probably going to, you know, release, a, 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 you know, just, just, just do a few more videos on this thing. Maybe a little tour of the plants after this. And then, uh, as this winter progresses and we get some seriously low temperatures, I will also, um, you know, uh, do a little update on progress. So until next time signing off, if you have any questions or input, feel free to, to comment on the bottom section. I'll see you later.